I was originally planning on filming this video last night with a glass of wine, but instead of filming the video, I proceeded to get even drunker and then go to the bar at 1 o'clock in the morning and get home at 5 and, and start a fight with the bouncer and the head of security and, and, um, and then wake up at noon. So we're doing this with coffee today. <laughs> <clears throat> I need to drink less. What's up everyone? My name is Kelsey. Uh, if you are new to my channel, I am a New York City based interior designer and today I'm going to be doing a little Q&A about interior design as a career and also about uh, my schooling. I put out a video a couple of months ago talking about my entire journey from going to school for interior design, why I became an interior designer, and all about the career, what I make, etc, etc. I will leave a link right here. I never know which side it's gonna be on. Here. I will leave a card right here and also link it in the description if you do wanna watch that video first. That video popped the fuck off. I got way more views and comments on that video than I ever anticipated. I I didn't think the video was very good when I made it, but that just goes to show you never, you never know what the internet is going to like. And on that video, I started receiving a bunch of comments of people's own questions that they had, people looking to go to school for interior design, people asking me about my experiences. So I am going to answer some of those questions today. So with that said, we'll get right into the questions. Cheers. Okay, the first question is from Kate Dang. Kate, thank you for watching this video and for commenting. Can you share more about your experience with studying a master's degree? Is there a big difference between a bachelor's and a master's degree in this field? Talking about job opportunities and salary. You do not need a master's degree in order to be an interior designer and to be successful and to make a lot of money. Most of the people that I went to school with, that, that I was an undergrad with, didn't pursue the master's degree and I don't think I would have pursued a master's degree in it if my program didn't have a additional one year program. I went to Drexel University and they have a four year interior design bachelor's degree. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Track? Is that what you call it? A track that you study on, on, a, on the track? I don't freaking, I don't know. Anyways, they offered a four year interior design bachelor's and if you wanted in your junior year, you can decide if you wanna pursue a master's degree and you just add an extra year onto that. So it would be five years and you would get both a bachelor's and a master's degree. That was such a good deal. How could I not take that deal? It's only one additional year to get a master's degree, which is absolutely insane because the, the typical time it takes to, is to get a master's degree. English. I'm not even that hungover. I'm just like just fucking delirious right now. I'm sorry. The typical amount of time it takes to get a, a master's I God, I can't say it. The typical time it takes to get a master's degree is I would say two to four years, depending on what that is. So one year, piece of cake. To answer your question, if you need to, in terms of, you know, job opportunities and salaries, Anytime you have a master's degree over someone that doesn't have a master's degree, that makes you look better. It also means that you can make a little bit more money. I would say putting it in perspective of salary. I live in New York City, so the salaries are higher because the cost of living is a lot higher. Um, the two do not necessarily equal each other, but we get paid slightly more for the extremely more taxes and, and living costs that we have. That didn't make any sense, but you get what I'm trying to say. If I were to get a job at a large firm right out of college in New York City, I would probably be looking at 50 to $55,000 a year. My starting salary, because I had experience and I had about a master's degree, uh, my starting salary was $60,000 a year. If we're not talking about New York City, let's say I were to stay in Philadelphia where the cost of living is a little bit lower, then uh, I would be expecting to make between 45 and 50,000 and with a master's degree, maybe between 50 and 55. Anytime you have a master's degree, you're, you're always gonna have a leg up over someone that doesn't have a master's degree. But with that said, it is not necessary at all. It is not typical. You do not need it to be successful and to get a, a great job and a great starting salary. Okay, I feel like that was a good, uh, a good start off question. Let's go to the next one. This next question is from Jessica James. Jessica writes, I'm a college freshman looking at options on whether to transfer schools and switch my major. And I'm conflicted on whether I should stay and pursue a different degree or go for a master's in interior design later. Do you have any advice on recognizing when you have a passion for interior design? Also, do you have any tips on how to financially support myself transferring into a different interior design program? Okay, so there's a couple questions in there. One is when 
do you know when you're passionate in interior design? I guess when did I know that I was passionate? I knew I was always passionate in architecture and art and I felt like interior design was a good fusing of that and I thought it was a great career to have if I wanted to be creative and be artistic but also be financially secure in a job. But I guess the the answer that everyone says but everyone hates to hear is you're really not gonna know when you're a college freshman, you're just not. You need to follow the things that you like and follow the things that you are interested in and that you have fun doing and not what other people tell you to do or what other people say is gonna make you more money because you're just gonna end up miserable and it, later in life you're gonna end up completely changing your careers anyways, which is totally fine, but follow the path in your degree or in your career that you find enjoyment because in the end, you can be a clown, but if you're the best damn clown in the whole world, you'll make a lot of money. Another question in there was, how can she help financially support herself if she does decide to transfer? The great thing about interior design and architecture and that whole industry in general is that it's typically a high demand job. When I was in school and I had to do a co-op internship at Drexel, every single person in my major had a paid internship. You rarely, rarely, rarely find unpaid internships anywhere in interior design and architecture. So I was also able to work in college along with my school work, along with when I wasn't on co-op doing part-time internships. Um, I know not everyone is a workhorse like me and you do not have to work two jobs like I did during your, your degree. Should she stay and finish her bachelor's and then go for a master's later in interior design or if she should just switch now. I think financially that might be a little bit harder. Of course, I don't know your financial situation and I am not a financial advisor and I did not anyone to talk about money because I I spend a lot of money and I, I, don't, I, I don't budget that much. But in my opinion, getting a bachelor's and then a master's degree financially will put you in more student loan debt. Student loan debt is literally the root of all evil for people our age. It sucks and I'm, I'm terribly sorry if you are experiencing that. But my overall advice is take it one step at a time, do that summer internship because you are gonna have this vision in your mind of what interior design is and what it looks like and what the job is and then you might get to that internship and think it's something different and either like it even more or like it less. So take it one step at a time, do an internship, don't make any drastic decisions. I started my college career at a state school upstate in New York. Uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do and I ended up transferring after two years and I came out okay and I survived and I have a great job now. So transferring is always an option. It's not gonna put you behind. And thanks for your question. The next question is from Danny Biata. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Bi Biata. There's a, a bunch of questions in here too, but I, again, I'm just gonna sift and pick the, this, the summary, the summary of it. And Danny writes, I had some questions for you. I'm probably a little older than you, looking at 30 real soon. Good for you, girl. 30 is the new 20. I'm, I'm not like right behind you, but I'm like almost right behind you and it's, it's absolutely terrifying. But if you can do it, I can do it. So I'm, I have confidence in you. You better do it. And after bouncing around many different low wage jobs in my 20s, I'm considering going back to school. Good for you. You should do that. I'm trying to pick a career that I'm interested in, pay the bills and something that fits in with my personality. I too played The Sims and painted decorated dollhouses, rearranged furniture as a child. We are literally cut from the same stitch of fabric. If you had to start your degree at 30, would you still do it? Danny, I would definitely say yes if I were to have a career change that I would still pick interior design for many different reasons. One, it is super flexible. You can go into several niches, subsections, industries within interior design itself and do so many different jobs. So I really love the flexibility. Definitely a lot of opportunities out there. Ultimately, I cannot tell you what you are passionate about, what you're going to be good at, what you're going to like, what you're going to not like. You have to decide that for yourself. I can just tell my experiences. All right, the next question is from Zazi. Man, I cannot pronounce any of these names. I listen to everyone saying that I can get a job in art, but now that I'm in my mid twenties, I finally have the courage to pursue interior design. Good for you, don't let people tell you that you can't make money doing anything that you want, that you can't make money doing art because that is bullshit. I'm really tired of school, but I wanna work in hospitality design, which seems to require a design degree. Zuzi Zazi Zozi, Zozi Zazi. I think residential is the subsection that you can get away with not having an interior design degree. I know a lot of people that never went to school, they just have great taste and great style and they had some experience and they can go into that but hospitality falls more under the commercial 
subsection of interior design. There's a lot to know about detailing. There's a lot to know about construction and layout. Again, it all depends on your goals. Going back to school is a huge commitment. I would definitely do more research into exactly what you're looking for in terms of a career. Am I really qualified to be giving anyone all of this advice? I just want to ask that question because I'm not sure. Take everything I say in this video with a grain of salt. And with that, we, we move on to the next question. The next question is from Callie. Hi, Callie. I am currently in junior high school. I've been looking into interior design and have been educating myself about it, but I'm a bit intimidated. If I have zero art skills and background and cannot draw to save my life, is that okay? And if so, is the school load really that bad? Um, Callie, yes, the school load really is that bad. It is not as severe as architecture. I would see the architecture students literally sleeping under their desks all night. I am not exaggerating. They all had sleeping bags underneath their desks so that they can stay up as late as they want, take a nap, and then wake up again and continue working on on their projects. That is just bonkers to me. You will hopefully not be doing that, but you will be doing a lot of physical work, like drawing plans and photoshopping stuff and doing presentations. To answer your question about having zero art skills, that's totally fine. That is something that you are gonna have to learn if you wanna go to interior design school. Most of the first year of your studies will be basic art classes. You're gonna have to learn about color, about balance, about form. You're gonna have to draw and paint and sketch. So you will be learning a lot of that. Uh, with that said, I went to school with a lot of people who did not have great art skills. I work with a lot of people that do not have great art skills. It is not make or break, but you will be learning that stuff. So if you don't like art and you don't like learning about color, balance, form, sketching, painting, then interior design school is probably not for you because you're gonna be doing it for a large chunk of, of your schooling there before you get into the actual technical skills. And the final question is from Nace. Nice. N niece. Thank you for your question. I wanted to thank everyone for their question. If I haven't already thanked you for your question, thank you for your question. How did you get a master's in architecture and design? Did you take up interior design or architecture? Okay, this is a good question to address because I mentioned that I have a bachelor's in interior design and a master's in interior architecture and design. Essentially, those are the same thing. One has a better name on it. The interior architecture part uh, I am not an architect. I want to make that very clear. I am not an architect. Architects are trained in a completely different way than designers are. They are trained more on the technical aspects. They are trained more on the forms of buildings and facades and we do not touch anything to do with the core and the facade and the exterior of a building. Hence the name interior design that's why they call it that because it's you're just you're just looking at the inside the the interior of the building design that's i know right who came up with that name for it i need more coffee as an interior designer i am not an expert on architecture i'm not an expert on engineering i'm not an expert on plumbing and mechanical and electrical but I was trained to know a little bit of everything so that I can do my job properly and it does not interfere with their job. Or I can realize a design and communicate my design to the professionals that are experts at all of those things. Just not be clueless when, I, when I'm designing an interior. And that's all the questions that I have for you today. I hope all of this was at least a little bit helpful. I, I'm not... Well, I guess I am qualified to answer some of these questions, but again, take everything that I said with a grain of salt, and I hope I answered your question. And if I didn't answer your question, of course, please feel free to leave me a comment down in the description box. I would like to start making more videos about interior design. A lot of people have been requesting it. So yeah, uh, I, that's, that's all I have to say. I need to go like probably take a cold shower and finish my coffee and maybe take a, a nap and have an Advil. So thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.